Forming colonies on other worlds has long been the stuff of science fiction. Some even believe it is mankind's destiny to spread throughout the cosmos. But will this actually be possible? If so, what will it take to create the first Martians? As you are about to find out, it will not be easy to say the least. Getting people safely to Mars and then providing them with the tools to survive will require us to overcome a great many technological challenges. And that's before we even begin to understand the long-term effects of astronauts living for extended periods of time on Mars. So you might ask, why bother in the first place? That is easier to answer. To provide an insurance policy against the inevitability of the extinction of our species. So what sort of challenges do we need to overcome? First of all, we need to actually get people to Mars. NASA, amongst other organizations like Elon Musk's SpaceX, have been working on this for several years now. In fact, NASA plans to send crewed missions to Mars sometime in the 2030s. To do this, we need big enough rockets or other crafts to transport humans and all their required kits to travel the 225 million kilometers between Earth and Mars. But this is the easy part. The real challenges begin once we get there. It is a truly alien world compared to our rather comfortable home planet. Whilst it is highly unlikely there are any hostile intelligent aliens there, the planet is dangerous enough in and of itself. Its atmosphere is much thinner than ours, about 1% of our own, and the surface is much colder than Earth, at around minus 100 degrees Celsius in the day. But there is some hope. Probes like Viking 1 and Viking 2, Opportunity and Curiosity rovers, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, and Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution, MAVEN, have gathered evidence that Mars might have once been more hospitable. This has led many to believe that it may once have supported microscopic life at one time. But the Mars of today is a very different beast altogether. Yet it does have some similarities to Earth. For example, a Martian day is not much different to Earth. At 24 hours and 39 minutes, Mars' axial tilt is also similar at 25.19 degrees versus Earth's tilt of 23.5 degrees. This should mean it exhibits seasonal patterns like Earth, albeit less pronounced given its distance from the sun and lack of thick atmosphere. It also has an abundant supply of water. But unlike Earth, this water is not liquid, but locked up in ice, and there might be a lot more tucked away underground. But that's about where the similarity ends. A Martian year is almost double that of Earth, at 668.6 .6 Martian days, and it is a very arid and hostile world compared to Earth. Mars doesn't have a strong magnetosphere, which means it lacks a shield against radiation from space. Gravity is also a lot weaker on Mars, at around 38% that of Earth. Its atmosphere, for what it's worth, would also be unpleasant to breathe, with its 96% carbon dioxide content. Once human colonists arrive on Mars, they will need not only to survive this alien world, but also figure out a way to actually adapt to the rigors of the planet. Whilst they won't need to start from scratch, per se, they will likely need to think creatively, using the best technology can offer them at the time. But they are bound to run into many unforeseen challenges and acts of God that will threaten their very existence on Mars. As it happens, there are a few existing technologies and strategies that could be used to help them get started. 3D printing could help build habitats and other materials in situ. Site colonies could be placed in underground lava tubes for added protection from the harshness of Mars' surface. Bases could be shielded with artificial magnetic fields to stave off the worst of the surface radiation. 
but more ambitious ideas include placing a very large magnetic field generator at a Lagrange point between the planet and the sun, or restarting Mars outer core by heating it up in a number of ways. And the first Martians would also need some food, air, water, and other necessities of life for a short term. A lot of this could be brought with them prior to becoming self-sufficient. With the base set up, now the first Martians just need to adapt to the planet. Humans are a very adaptable species, but could Mars be a step too far? Long-term adaptation to Mars will likely occur over generations rather than a single lifetime. Some have suggested that it might be more effective to adapt Mars to us rather than us to it. A process called terraforming, if successful, would give Mars a more hospitable, perhaps breathable atmosphere. This will require a means of pumping enormous quantities of life-needing gases into the atmosphere and increase the surface temperature to something more akin to Earth. Not an easy challenge, to say the least. This has led many to speculate that it might be better to adapt Earth's organisms to Mars instead. Aeroforming would require selecting likely candidates on Earth that could, with some tweaking, adapt to life on Mars. Species like lichens and methanogens might be a good start. Plants could also conceivably be genetically modified to survive the rigors of Mars. As we learn more about the planet, it might even be possible to genetically modify humans and animals to better survive Martian conditions. As you can see, it will not be easy or quick for that matter to create the first Martians. It will take a considerable investment in time, energy, technology, and will to achieve it. Whilst there are some solutions that could work, it is unclear whether microorganisms, let alone humans, could ever survive, let alone adapt to the planet. If we could get there and safely set up a colony, shield it, harvest energy and raw materials, and survive for an extended period of time, what would be the long-term effects by colonists? Will they be able to procreate viable children, for example? How will their bodies and minds change over time? Would they form a splinter civilization to Earth? Unless we attempt it, we will never know for sure. If mankind is destined to live on in other worlds, Mars is probably a good first step. <laughs>